I'm here with my partner, Dr. Samir Desai. We are here today to discuss suggestions, recommendations for applicants to anesthesiology. So, uh, Samir, I wanted to cover several aspects of applying to anesthesiology residency. The first would be, how early do you think uh, medical students should start? Well, I believe that students should start as soon as they have an interest or have confirmed their interest in the field. I think many of the students who go into anesthesiology will confirm their interest in their third year of medical school. And so uh, during the third year, there's a lot of steps that can be taken to put you in a position to reach your goals, and that is matching successfully. Well, let's say you've decided upon anesthesiology as a field. Can you give us some advice on how to research programs to which you would be applying? Absolutely. Uh, what I tell uh, every student who is planning to make a career in anesthesiology is to visit program websites and do that as early as possible because there are programs that have very, very specific requirements and it's uh, dangerous to assume a one-size-fits-all approach when you're applying to anesthesiology. So when you visit program websites, you'll be able to see the things that you need to do, and if you have enough time to do it, that'll make sure that you are able to apply to as many programs as you want to. Well, can you give me some examples of what are some of the differences that you might find on a program website? Sure, I can give you uh, several examples. Uh, for example, Although anesthesiology as a specialty, for the most part, doesn't require a chairman's letter, there are some programs that do. Uh, a great example of that would be the Department of Anesthesiology at William Beaumont Hospital in uh, Detroit, Michigan. They prefer that applicants submit a letter from the chairman of their anesthesiology department. And if you know that early enough, then you can make proper arrangements and make inquiries with your school to figure out how to get that done. And what are some other examples of things that might be different between programs? Well, the number of letters of recommendation requested by programs may vary. In particular, what you want to know is how many letters do they want from anesthesiology faculty members. Some programs will be fine if they receive just a single letter from an anesthesiology attending, but other programs may request or even require two letters of recommendation from anesthesiology faculty. You know, and going on with the subject of letters of recommendation, that's something that you and I have written about in the Successful Match, about how students often feel as though there's not much that they can do to, um, what's the word, to um, influence or impact the letter of recommendation, that it's just a matter of asking the right people. But you and I have written about, you know, things that you need to consider when you're asking people for a letter of recommendation. What are some of the requirements specifically for an anesthesiology letter? Well, I would say that anesthesiology programs are looking for certain content. And it's important that you highlight skills and qualities that they are looking for. So if you have a rotation with an anesthesiology attending and you are aware of the qualities and skills programs are looking for, then you can make it a point to showcase those types of qualities and skills during your rotation and therefore make it easier for the anesthesiology attending to incorporate that key type of information in their letter. I think we're going to need some examples here. Uh, do you, do programs write about this on their website? They do. Some programs will talk about their selection process and will describe what they're looking for in an applicant. And some programs will be very, very specific, and a great example of that is the Johns Hopkins Department of Anesthesiology, which basically comes out and says, you know, we're looking for certain information in the letters of recommendation, and they are looking for information about an applicant's cognitive abilities, their judgment skills, their interpersonal and communication skills, their professionalism and integrity, and how they work in an operating room environment. And obviously, if you think about all these things they're looking for, these are all very, very vital qualities uh, necessary for a successful anesthesiologist. Oh, uh, absolutely. Do you have any other suggestions for anesthesiology applicants? I do. Uh, I think that it's important to get off to an early start in terms of completing your application. I think most students will wait uh, until the summer before they apply to start putting everything together. But if you know you want to go into anesthesiology, there's nothing that says you have to wait that long. For example, 
you can complete your ERAS application uh, well in advance of the summer. Now, so even you, though how, yeah. yeah, how do you complete an ERAS application when uh, the system hasn't even opened yet? Right. So the system will open in in the summer, but uh, you will be able to see what the application asks for. So it, essentially, you can prepare those fields in a Microsoft Word uh, document, for example, and have it ready to go, and then simply transfer the information into the uh, actual document when the system opens. And what's great about that is if you can get it done early, that takes uh, the stress uh, away from having to do one more thing in the summer. So give me an example of one section that you could complete from an ERAS application that you could complete in a Microsoft Word document. So uh, one example would be so let's say that you've been involved in uh, a variety of extracurricular activities. Maybe one of them is your involvement in your anesthesia interest group at your medical school. Well, one of the things that you'll be asked to complete in the ERAS application is a description of your involvement uh, and your contributions. And that's the type of thing that you can do well in advance of when the system opens. And uh, if you do that, then obviously you can just transfer that in later. And I think it's probably also important to, for our listeners to realize that some people may be uh, third years, but some of our listeners may be first years, and they may not realize all of the information specifically that ERAS applications ask for. So I would add that it's probably a great idea to do a review very early on in your medical school career to see the sort of fields that ERAS applications ask for, correct? Definitely. I mean, if you look at it early on in your medical school career and you realize what programs are looking for, volunteer and community service activities, research experience, leadership, work experience, you may be able to, you know, plan strategically to do significant endeavors in these different areas so that by the time you're ready to apply as a fourth-year medical student, you have substantial uh, information, including your application. I think I would add also that students may not realize that uh, a lot of these fields ask for very specific information. So, for example, for volunteer activities, they ask how many hours did you devote to that activity. So that's something also that I think if you didn't know ahead of time, you may not realize that you need to be keeping a log of all of that information. Um, moving on for an anesthesiology applicant, what about the personal statement? Is there any advice that you have for that specific aspect of the application? Well, the personal statement is the application component that keeps people up at night, and I would say that it's probably the uh, component that's tackled uh, at the end. People wait uh, close to the time of the application submission to really uh, tackle this, and um, there is a strong argument for working on this and completing this well before September 15th. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, well, one reason is that some of your letter writers may you to submit your personal statement as part of your packet of information that they need to write you a strong letter of recommendation. So obviously if you have that done earlier, that's to your advantage. Do you have any data on what themes or uh, any sort of general guidelines for when an anesthesiology applicant in particular is writing their personal statement? Right. So uh, you can basically take a look at a personal statement uh, in two parts. The first is content. So when anesthesiology program directors and key personnel look at the statement, they'll be looking to see is the key content available. And the second part is does it read well, does it flow well, is it grammatically correct? And so both parts need to be done well to make the impression that you want. And the impression that you want is this is someone that I definitely need to meet at an interview. And in terms of content, specifically for anesthesiology, is there anything that uh, – do we have any data on that? We do. We do have some information on what programs are looking for. Uh, one thing that they're looking for is why is the applicant interested in anesthesiology? So one of the major uh, missions of the Department of Anesthesiology as it comes to residency selection is to bring aboard new residents who are committed to the field. And they want to make sure that students have explored the field and have made an informed decision because the last thing they want is for someone to start and then leave the program, which, of course, leaves them shorthanded. And I know we've worked on developing content for our partner website, thesuccessfulmatch.com. Is, uh, is there any resource that you would send an applicant to on our website? 
Absolutely. So on our anesthesiology page, so we have pages dedicated to each specialty, and we break down the process of matching successfully into anesthesiology into a series of steps. And so applicants, no matter where they are in their medical school career, can find something that pertains to them. And then wherever they are, they can utilize that information to make them a more attractive applicant for uh, anesthesiology. So to give you an example, if you're a third-year medical student and you have an upcoming rotation in anesthesiology, well, we have resources to help you perform at a high level during that rotation. Wonderful. And I'll end with one last question, which is going back to letters of recommendation. How should you be, when and how should you be asking and attending for a letter? Well, timing is is very, very important. I think a lot of students wait until the summer before they apply before approaching letter writers. But I think you can make a very, very strong argument that you you should be approaching letter writers much sooner in the process. I'll give you my own uh, personal story. Of course, I I did not apply for anesthesiology. I applied for internal medicine. But the story still uh, is very, very useful no matter what specialty you're going after. And basically, I did my internal medicine rotation as a third-year medical student in the fall, so October, November, and part of my rotation was working with an endocrinologist in an outpatient clinic, and I worked very, very closely with this particular attending, and he got to know me very, very well, and I received regular feedback, and I remember uh, the feedback being consistently uh, positive, and I really felt at the end of that rotation that this was somebody who could be a strong advocate for me. So when it came time to apply then in the summer, um, right before uh, summer of my fourth year, when I approached this attending, you know, we met and I, you know, asked him, you know, would you feel comfortable writing a strong letter of recommendation? I was really surprised and actually uh, better would, would be shocked when he said, you know, uh, I'm sorry, but but I can't, you know, I know that we've worked together, but you, you have to understand that I work with so many students and it's been so long since I worked with you that I don't think that I could uh, give your letter the justice that it, that it deserved. So what that reminded me was that, you know, I had an opportunity to ask him for that letter in that fall right after I rotated with him, and that would have been a better time for me to approach him. That's a good lesson, lesson learned. Um, And uh, I think um, we'll just wrap up here. Do you have any last words of wisdom for, uh, for an applicant? From the standpoint of anesthesiology, I would say that, you know, the the competition for anesthesiology residency positions has certainly uh, intensified uh, in in recent years. So I think that there's a lot of good that can come from getting off to an early start and uh, really researching these program websites so that you can take all the necessary steps to be ready to apply on the first day that you can. Thank you for that introduction to the topic for anesthesiology applicants. In future episodes, we'll be going over similar information for different specialties, and we'll delve further into other facets of the anesthesiology application. For our listeners, we do have further resources on our website, thesuccessfulmatch.com. There is a page there labeled Podcasts. If you have questions or ideas for future topics that you would like to see us cover in our podcast, please send us a message via our website. Thank you.